I think I speak for a lot of men when when it comes down to a household, there's two things that we really want. We really just want to understand that we're on the same team. That, mm -hmm. That's it. I could be wrong and sink the ship. But if you say, hey, you know what? You sink the ship, I'm going down with you. I'm like, God, no, really? Now, mm -hmm. I understand we in this together. Again, come hell or high water. If we understand that you're on the same team with us, that you're fighting, you, that you're fighting the same fight that we're fight, that uh, that I'm fighting, then there is no need to fight. That's the key. And, 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 and one of my favorite movies is John Q. And I don't know if you ever remember it. It's, I'm, I know I'm bringing up a lot of old movies here, but it's it's a point that I'm going. So Denzel played the um, the father, and you know he ran into a string of bad luck and the son had a heart condition and needed a heart transplant and unfortunately there we movie. go right at one point in time the wife got to the point where she added pressure to him fix it do something so he was already under stress but then at a later point in time the police lieutenant came to the wife and was trying to ask her certain questions about him so that they can understand how to catch him and then she caught him she realized what she was doing she like oh you're trying to put together a case against my husband. She said, no, whatever he does, I'm with him. That's all we want. That is mm -hmm. it. Even if we're wrong, let's do it first and then tell me, right? Tell me, say, you know what? I'm with you. I just don't think this is going to work, but whatever you decide, we're, we're going to do it together. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, what you're going to find is that we'll come to you and say, hey, I want to do this thing. What do you think about that? What do you think? Right. Because we built trust that we know that you got us. Right. And we're not correcting you in public. As a matter of fact, I don't believe that you should be talking down to your spouse at any rate, whether no. it's in public or behind closed doors, because we're both adults. Yeah. And there's a way to speak to someone compassionately even if they are in the wrong yeah but you have love has to be the source of it it, right. it just can't be from a nasty place and if love is at the source then it's easy to communicate in a compassionate way regardless absolutely. of what it is yeah absolutely and here's the other side i i want to make sure i address this as well because i've heard the phrase several times from several different couples that you know the bible says that we're going to do all things in love well, I think a large portion of that misunderstanding and antiquated thinking, it, it, it kind of shapes the idea to believe that love only fits one metric. But when you go back to the source of love, he has done everything from compassion to correction. So everything within that space is love. I'm not going to correct you if I don't care about you. You can do whatever. If you want to drive down the street doing 100 and tell me about it later, you good? All right, great. And I'm moving on. But if I love you, then I'm going to tell you, say, hey, you know what? Maybe that's not the best thing to do. And I'm not going to attack you in it. I'm just going to address it and then believe within myself, within, I, I believe wholeheartedly that the Holy Spirit is at work in each and every person. Only thing I need to do is make you aware of it. And once I make you aware of it, then allow you and the Holy Spirit to have the perfect conversation. Hopefully you'll fix it. But if not, right. well, I guess we need to have another conversation. This one might be a little different. Right now, I have to express myself to you, right, to help mm -hmm. you to understand. I didn't necessarily like that. There's nothing wrong with a man expressing himself. Here's where, <laughs> here's where we've uh, experienced some things. When a man expresses himself, a lot of times what ends up happening is that we take his expression and then we respond to the expression and not the words that he is saying. Mm -hmm. Well. The issue with responding to the expression and not the words that he is saying is that just like you, he feels that he's not heard. And so when he says, hey, you know, I don't necessarily like the fact that this happened, you know what I'm saying? Because it kind of made me feel one way or the other. Well, you're responding to the way that he's addressing it. You don't like the fact that he's bringing it to your attention or you feel uneasy because, well, maybe you weren't really corrected a lot when you were growing up. So now when you are corrected, you feel like you feel like it's a personal attack. But he was talking about the behavior, not the person. And that's where right. we run into some issues because we automatically take correction and we relate it to with the person. If a person is addressing a false tale, he is not deliberately calling the person a liar. 
if you take it as being a liar, that's something that you chose to do. But he is mm-hmm. addressing a, he's addressing a false statement. So what we have to be careful in the line of communication like you spoke to, uh, that you referred to a few seconds ago, we have to learn to respond to what the person is actually saying, not necessarily how we perceive their emotions to be, because at that point we're telling them they're wrong for feeling the way that they feel. You have some experience within the workplace as well as personal experience. Well, what has been your exposure with the differences between male and female perspectives as it relates to parenting? Wow. Um, well, I would say typically what I've experienced and what I've seen, mothers take more of a hands-on role where the fathers are, like you were saying, the lights are on, there's food on the table, you have a bed, a warm bed to sleep in, and that, that's it. Like, I'm making sure that you're provided for where the mother is more, you know, is the homework done. Did you clean your room? How are your grades? Um, I got to get you to practice. So I think, like you said, it's an antiquated historical thing that's been put into us. Yeah. That this, these are the roles where now mm-hmm. women are starting to be, they are the providers in the household mm-hmm. and they're doing all of those things also. And then it's hard for the man to actually come in and say, hey, you know, or to, to take lead, I'll just say yeah, that, yeah. to take lead in the household because women have been doing so much that is, well, I really don't need you to do that. Right. Not saying that's true and not saying it's false. Right. But I've seen it a lot where women are more hands on than the fathers are. And the fathers are tapped in for those issues like, hey, I need you to take care of this. This is what they did. Wait till your dad gets home. Like you were saying, they don't want to, they don't want to deal with that part, but everything else is okay. Yeah. So me, you know, I don't think that is fair. And I've seen it opposite where the man is the one who is taking on a more hands-on role. And some moms are not, he's got it, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. And I'm yeah. like, what? You don't, I don't, I don't know that. I, I got to have my hands on it. I want to see yeah. that what, what I'm pouring into my daughters, they're going to grow in a more positive way. Yeah. And I think that if both parents, not saying that they don't because he, a provider is a provider and he is adding value to the home regardless and that's the way that maybe he was raised. You know, this is what I have to do. This is what I was taught. But if we sit down and we communicate, how do we want our marriage? How do we want our family dynamic to be? I know this mm-hmm. is how we were taught, but did it work out for us? Right. Is there friction in our relationship because of what we were taught, what we were right. raised to, to think our roles were? How do we change that dynamic? How do we change that conversation? So that way our kids know, hey, this is interchangeable. Mm-hmm. One day you may be the sole provider. Who knows in this society? Right. But if we're communicating together and we know at any at any point or stage in this marriage, in our family and upbringing of our children, we're on one accord. Right. We're one united front. So it doesn't matter if you're the breadwinner or if it's me next week. We're, we're a united front both roles are interchangeable if I need you to pick up and say hey you got to get them from practice I need you to do the majority of the cooking or this is what I got going on or I need a break it's not going to be any issue well you know I don't I don't I don't do all of that why not why not so I believe that we we have to start communicating more Mm -hmm. in our needs as well as our wants because Sometimes we don't express our wants, and then that can, right. that also creates confusion yes. and frustration in a relationship, and then that starts to tear down at the foundation. Yeah. But if our foundation's already been laid in the beginning, I'm not saying it, and it can change because sometimes even in a home, foundations crack, and you have to get the foundation repaired. Yeah. So you could always go back to okay, this is what we said, but it's not working out. How can we adjust this without shaking up the whole household? Okay, let's start here. Yeah. So it's interchangeable, but I've seen where women are more hands-on and, and the fathers are the authoritarians in the household. Yeah. 
and you know i i agree with you 100 percent um and I, i've seen this as well and not just in the profession but also in my personal life and i and i tend to relate it back to a couple of things so your core family dynamics your upbringing and then our understanding and for the most part collectively our lack of understanding when it comes to attachment theory because that factors into what we're doing as well so whatever i seen growing up either i like it or i didn't like it you know and then i take my lessons that i learned from that and i brought it into my adulthood life so this is what i've seen my mother and my father do and so that's what i'm gonna do as well and so mm -hmm. this is what i've seen that works and that's what i'm gonna do as well however on the other hand well, this is what i've seen that my father did to my mother and i didn't like it therefore i refuse to let that happen in my life well when you bring that behavior that mindset that thought process into your life which we have to understand today looks different again than 1973 which was the year i was born yes. by the way i'm just throwing that out there so to, <laughs> so 2022 looks different than 1973. so i can't compare the same information in two different spaces of time and not understanding the outside like the outside um what's the word the culture the, the culture absolutely i'm sorry thank you for that you, you, you have to understand that the space that we exist in, we have concentric circles going all around us. You have your neighborhood, you have your family, you have your teachers, you have your friends, you have your cousins, you know, you have the in-laws, you have your, in your outlaws. All of these people factor in to who you are today. So when I bring old information that's outdated into today's society, then that information is not a perfect fit. Oh yeah, by the way, my father is not the primary influence of my life right now. My father and my mother, they are advisors. That's it. So if we're married, I can't go to my mom and say, mama, she's doing this right here. What, 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 what right. Mama? I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't do that. Because the first thing that I did is I devalued you as my partner. Mm. And so when we understand the partnership within a relationship or the team, as I like to call it, the Bible refers to it as a three strand cord. And here's the beauty of it. The third strand is more important than either of the first two. So yes. if I'm one strand and you're one strand. Neither one of us are the most important person in that relationship. The relationship itself is the most important person. So when we're asking those questions, we should be asking, what is the relationship requiring of me? When I ask that question, that takes me to a whole sense of a, a whole different sense of awareness because now I'm not considering getting even with you for being mad at me. That's it's not that's, about your ego either. It's not about your ego, exactly. So that's the things that we have to understand. The partnership, as you address, is clearly the most profound dynamic when it comes down to raising children. They see this, they embody this, believe it or not. And the and the health of that relationship equates to the psychological and emotional health in their lives. When we separate and we separate those relationship bonds, what ends up happening is that the child will side with one parent or the other because there's a sense of anxiety that exists there. So mm -hmm. I must make it a safe space for my child to contact and openly communicate with the other parent. In fact, I should be an advocate of it because if I'm not, they don't feel like they're empowered to do so. So they'll go hide in the closet, they'll call their dad when they're not at home, and then daddy is on the other hand, you know, feeling some type of way because they don't get right. to talk to their child as often and things. So it, it's, it's just all of those things. So when I look at the differences, the differences as we talked about previously, is a part of that antiquated information brought into a space to where that information is now outdated. Women aren't staying in the kitchen any longer, bro. I'm just, I'm just, I want to be honest with you. And if that's the way that you're looking at, if that's your approach to marriage, stay single. Stay single and continue to learn. W women, men are more in tune with their emotion these days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sorry. So there has to be learning on both sides of the fence. Men, if she works, just respect the fact that she works. Women, if you work, your job is not the most important thing in your life. So don't bring it home talking about it for the rest of the evening. In fact, right. I'll go this far. If that's the only conversation that you can have, you need to do some self-assessments. <laughs> Men, 
If all you do is talk about your job, you need to do some self-assessments. It works on both ends. And I, I, mm-hmm. I think that's the issue because a lot of times in these different mindsets, we're looking for setting the conditions so we can gain control. That's the issue. And, I, and I've said this before, and I'm going to continue to say it. Every war that we've ever encountered was all about power. Power is whatever you make a person believe it is. Right. So when you bring the war down the scale to a skirmish, which is what happens in the household, it's all about the perception of power. So if I can make you, per- if I can give you the perception that I am powerful, I'm the man. I rule with an iron fist. Why? Because I pay the bills. Well, at one point in time, that was the power base. It was mm-hmm. wrong. We understand that. This is why when you look at it now, most men have moved away from that. Older men, I'm seeing now, hopefully, they're teaching the younger men, say, hey, man, you can't be that. You got to be the total right. person now. You know what I'm right. saying? You got to openly communicate. You got to be honest about how you feel. You still got to provide. You still got to protect. You still got to pray. You got to make space for people to express themselves within their household. But you still have to be the masculine voice in the house. So now your challenge is to figure out how to do all that. Yeah. And that's the hard part. <laughs> it is the hard part. Because that, that, that wasn't taught. So yeah. now is a lot of men are learning mm-hmm. how, to, how to be hum- how to be human. Mm. You're not a machine and you're not a superhero. Mm. That's good. You have emotions, you have feelings, you have opinions. Mm-hmm. And they all should be valued. It shouldn't yeah. be, oh well, did you how how many hours did you get this week? What's your check looking like? Right. You know, these are things that our ancestors, it was, I gotta go work. That That's the main focus, that I gotta go work. Where now it's, okay, you can work, but when you come home, I'm gonna ask you about your day, but that doesn't mean going for hours. Just right. give me a snippet. Right. Because now I wanna get to, so how are you doing? There we go. Okay, ask me about my day. What, yeah. what plan do we have for the future? Are we building something together? You know, so like you said, you, you gotta, you gotta be all a human, right. a, a well-rounded human. Yeah. And for most part, men are learning how to do that. And here's the part. Here's the here's the best thing about it. You're great at expressing your emotions. You were expressing your emotions ever since you was a little girl playing with Barbie dolls. We were playing with Tonka toys and GI Joe. Ain't right. no emotions in them. We fighting and winning. That's it. That's all we knew. So as a, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, you know, and, and, and I've said this before and somebody thought about it. I was like, man, it's crazy. I never looked at it like that. Well, Disney set us up for failure because it taught you that a Prince Charmer was coming and there would be life, you know, you would live happily ever after. Well, newsflash, ain't no Prince Charming and there is no happily ever after. You got to figure out life every day of your life. So that's the issue. You're great with your emotions. I'm still learning how to express mine. You have to help me express my emotions. The minute that you make me feel unsafe in expressing myself, I no longer express myself. I I, 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 I wanna say that part again, because that right there is profound. The minute that I express myself to you and you show me that me expressing myself is unwanted within this space, I stop expressing myself. So when you ask me what's wrong, my response is nothing. Mm -hmm. Even if you are, what's wrong? Wow. And then that just starts to build up. Yes, exactly. Resentment starts to come in because when I tried to express myself to you, you rejected it. Right. And and I want to be, I want to be honest. It works both ways. Men, when she expressed herself, make room for her to express herself hear what she is saying now sometimes it's going to be loud it's going to be boisterous and it might be thunderous so you got to learn to <laughs> just being honest man <laughs> but you, you, you honest, spot on you spot honesty on. gets me in trouble sometimes i'm sorry <laughs> but listen learn to sift through that not not ignore it you got to hear the important thing and respond to it that's the key so if she is, you know, going on and on and on, and a lot of time, and I'm just being honest, what I've experienced in some of the conversations that I had, and even in my own personal experience, a lot of women think while talking. Men like to think before talking. So we'll be quiet, but then when we talk, we have something to say. 
women will give you a story that leads to another story and another story and within the within the connection of these stories is what she is saying so you're gonna have to learn to repeat back to her what you think she is saying so she can correct you there's nothing wrong with that i got it wrong help me to, where did i miss it at help me to understand what, exactly what it is that you're trying to say now she gets to the point she feels like she heard 